Hi guys, it's Randy with Direct Action Combat Performance. In front of us here, we got a, a couple of different battle belts that um, I would have used in my previous place of employment. And uh, I just want to talk about the setup, talk about the considerations. But one thing I want to clarify uh, before we move on is from a previous video that I did, um, you know, in the early days of the Direct Action getting up and going, um, was I kind of um, skimmed over the holster that I used uh, while operating at the unit. So what, what we have here is two different belts and what I want to talk about is the pros and cons to the, the holster selection itself. Um, I have uh, received a few questions and a few requests on um, holster selections and why, what are the pros and cons and why I chose what I chose. So in my previous video, I um, talked about this particular battle belt, which is a, a tier tactical uh, battle belt. Now, what I, I glanced over in the earlier video was the holster itself. So from an operational perspective, when I was uh, running and gunning with the teams, this wouldn't have been the holster of my choice. This is a great holster. This is a holster made by Gray Fox Strategic here in Canada. Um, but the thing I don't like about it and that I wouldn't use from an operational context is the passive retention system. So the only thing that is keeping the, the gun into its holster is the retention um, hardware that you see here. This is great for a lot of different purposes, but from an overall operational context in terms of you know, repelling or fast roping out of a chopper, climbing in and through and around confined spaces, a CQB setting where maybe a physical altercation was to ensue, and you know, there's risks of the gun being dislodged from the holster. Um, not to mention to add um, perhaps gun grabs or a retention from somebody that's trying to take the gun from you. So what we have here is a holster by Safari Land, and this is the ALS holster. So this particular holster is a level two holster. What makes it a level two is the thumb lever that you see here in this position here is what actually unlocks the mechanism to draw the holster from the gun. Now with the level one and two, one being passive retention, there's enough retention on it where if it was turned upside down, the friction of the holster itself prevents the gun from popping out. So that would be level one, passive. This is what we have here. This would be a passive level retention. Level two gives you an added component of safety and security. When the gun is seated home, not only do you get the audible feel, uh, the audible click, but you also get the, the positive feel that the gun is set home properly. Now, there are other um, levels out there, for an example, a level three, which would have a bale or a hood over the back strap and, and the rear sight of the gun that gets manipulated forward. So as that level three gets pushed forward, level two gets manipulated, and then level one would be the friction of the holster itself to unholster. So the reason that I would prefer that is because of the level of safety, the level of um, you know, um, retention that is built in. Not saying that there's um, definitely some pros and cons with both of these, but from an operational perspective, if somebody were to ask me, hey man, which holster, which gun belt would you take if you were getting back into the stack and you were gonna run a gun with the boys again? You know, the gun belt would be something like this. So a tier tactical or um, a Warrior Gear Canada belt, something a little bit smaller, low profile. Then the holster most likely would be something of uh, Safari Land ALS type of, of holster.